Thank you, Ali. <laughs> Welcome everyone to our opening of um, our return to self. Um, we have a little less than half of the artists represented in the show with us today. And we're gonna do um, a art panel, but we'd like to start off with a clip, a trailer for a um, production that is still in the works. It's a sneak peek of a biography on Elgin Jumper, one of our future artists. So let me get that ready. Um, it was up ready to go. I know, but I downloaded it. <laughs> okay, oh, it is. Here it is. Okay. It's stuck. <laughs> When I look at Elgin's art, I think of the seminal story. Elgin's art represents the seminal ability to work within the modern world and also have relevance in our past and in our own truths and knowledge. He has a very creative process that he engages in. He loves to push the boundaries of what is considered contemporary art and to blur those boundaries between genres of art as well. Watching Elgin develop as an artist on the canvas, you know, watching uh, as he's started to develop and try different ideas from watercolor to oils to chalk is a it's mind blowing. I think the first week I, I worked here, I was introduced to him by my boss. He has um, taken masterpieces and kind of included seminal subjects in that. He's uh, had uh, paintings that um, remind you of masterpieces by Picasso. So and Matisse and and it's uh, very interesting how he incorporates seminal subjects into that. Seminal art is really important. It's claiming that voice for us in contemporary society. More than just an expression of our culture, it's a negotiation of our identity. Especially with artists like Elgin, which take a more modern or contemporary look at art. Elgin's art is very dynamic in the mediums that it chooses and also in the references to classical art that he chooses to highlight from his works. We've done uh, some expositions of his work before and there's some certain paintings that he did of Big Cypress area. He's got a landscape here, he's got Snake Road uh, a depiction. He's he's got a uh, a chiki, and and that uh, 
really represents life here. Now, anybody that's come from the south uh, to Big Cypress Reservation has driven on, on Snake Road. And if I see this painting, I don't care where I'm at, it, it just takes me back to, to this place and it gives me peace. You know, some of his paintings, you couldn't tell if it was done, it, it was, the subject matter was from yesterday. It was from 50 years ago or 100 years ago. And others, like there, there may be a chiki with, uh, with a pickup truck. And that kind of gives you the, the, the yesterday and today kind of feel. So it, it's, uh, it's, it's really interesting. His, his paintings are very thought invoking. I was about six or seven years old, and I, I just uh, picked up a pen or a uh, pencil, and and I just kept it up. It became a part of me, and um, I was drawing uh, portraits, uh, still life, uh, landscapes, and um, I think I took it. Seriously, it was uh, 2004, and I had ju just gotten a lot of drama and turmoil behind me uh, related to uh, alcohol and abusing alcohol, and, and I finally just I was I was clear of it, and I just said. Um, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do something. Uh, I have to change my life. I have to reinvent myself. And um, I, I said, okay, all right. I have, I have drawing. So why don't I take that further with painting? You know, I, it was a, it was a blank canvas. And, and, uh, I've been I've been painting on that canvas, and it's really turned into a colorful, purposeful painting. Elgin and I go back. back we used to call me EG as kids. We go back to uh, you know youngsters running around a reservation, racing bicycles, and. Uh, you know, everybody knew Elgin and, you know, I didn't know he had that artistic thing about him. You know, some guys got it, some guys don't. I've tried to do it uh, just because I like it so much you know I'm a big fan of you know art that's what kind of got my interest and then you know I saw what he was doing you know on canvas and uh, I thought he had a pretty special gift there Full screen. There we go. Or is that going to be playing over here? Elgin, would you like to be the do the the, the first? No. Um, if we could actually make that seat the hot seat. <laughs> um, would you like to talk a little bit about your artwork and um, a little answer some of the questions about the film the, about what we just saw? Okay. Get it out of here. Well, uh, this. Five when we first thing is and all that. But you know
And that's what we showed at the in Big Cybers and the 20 minutes of it. But we're going to get it up to uh, 45 minutes or so. And we're still we're still filming. Um, we're going to film in Big Cypress. Uh, I think back here and uh, on the reservation in Hollywood. And it's, it's just something, um, the whole idea started, a friend of mine, we were talking about uh, making uh, documentaries and stuff like the show on YouTube, you know, uh, like five minutes, you know, three minutes. And we were like, yeah, I want to make one. And we were like, oh, we'll make it ourselves. And then I started thinking about it and I was like, it's not going to be too good if I do it myself. <laughs> So uh, I, I had the idea and, uh, about what I wanted to do with it. And I had, uh, so I, I sent an email to, to SMP and it was like a treatment, you know, for the, for the documentary. And I told him I wanted to flow from the beginning. The film will do this, it'll do this. I want poetry to flow with the in and out of poetry and uh, very poetic feeling to it. And uh, I want my friends to, to come in and, and help me with it. And uh, just to um, sort of share our art, like what we're doing now, you know, we're sharing our art and we're uh, uh, discussing it, analyzing it, you know, uh, I, I sort of critique my own art, and uh, it's just uh, something that's really turned out to be a good uh, project. And uh, it just shows a lot of the stuff that I meant to, uh, a lot of the soundscapes, uh, poetry mostly, which I wanted it to, from beginning to end, to flow with poetry. You know? And because uh, I write, I write poetry. I'm working on. Uh, collection, a new collection of poetry now. And um, I, I consider artwork to be poetry, you know, uh, without words, you know, and it speaks a language that speaks to us as poetry. It's, it's, it's something other than prose, you know, it goes beyond prose. So uh, that's the idea behind it. And uh, I told, um, <coughs> Matt, um, the guy, the videographer I'm working with, uh, my story at the uh, headquarters of Seminole Media. And, you know, I was going on <laughs> about uh, my idea for the movie, you know, for the, for the documentary. And it just started, started getting, you know, it was like, like a piece, you know, like a painting, it just started growing and developing more and more as we went along. So that's how I got started, and uh, it's it's a lot of uh, a lot of work, a lot of scheduling, a lot of um, uh, stuff like that. But then, without working on it, when 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 our hearts are in it, and you can see that the chemistry and the camaraderie, there's a, like a magic that happens and things happen that aren't planned, but they really come out in the documentary, you know, so. Um, we'll still be working on it. It's called Elgin Jumpers Colorful Journey. And um, it's really been a journey since I started painting and, and focusing on art, you know, full time. And uh, I, when I, when I started in 2004, I said, I told myself, well, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to put my, all my heart into it. I'm going to, you know, sometimes I might even forsake other things, but I'm just, this has got to be the way it is for me and in order for me to do it. So it's it's really been um, a blessing, a, a dream, uh, I've been following my dream. 
taking it further and learning. You know, it's a lot of learning involved and uh, practice, a lot of practice. You know, that's the key, uh, the practice. So you really have to um, commit yourself to it, and 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 I have no regrets. You know, I have no regrets. And, uh, I, I tried I tried everything in, in art, uh, different painting styles. I started studying um, Leonardo, Leonardo da Vinci, his whole life. I've been getting a lot of books and reading on uh, Leonardo. And I think I'll, I'll study Michelangelo next, the Renaissance painters. And even though my artwork is more modern, more contemporary, I think it's important to study and to really uh, get into how it all started. Uh, that's, you know, 500, over 500 years ago, oil paintings been there from then, from then on. I think it was uh, 1911 when acrylic started coming but that's what I did. I, I really, that's how I further it by trying to get a grasp, as much grasp on it as I can. And just taking it to heart. It, it, you take it into heart, and then it travels from there, from the heart, and it comes out to the brush. And the brush touches the canvas. And that's where, that's where the poetry truth it all comes out onto the canvas and so i really appreciate these kind of things where we can bring it out and i look forward to other seminal artists having their own documentaries you know bringing their their uh, art out for the for the world to see and uh, we're not just here um, you know, on the reservation, we got to see the but you know, the, the real story, we're here, we're, we're doing art, doing good things, productive things, creatively, and I'm really grateful to have, have people like this, and uh, exhibitions like this, and Tara, working with her for years now, <laughs> and um, like the uh, Ali was saying, you know, we were way back when there were only a few of us. And um, the way how far it's come, you know, it's just is so great to see. You know, we hope it, it's, it stays like this and, and more seminal artists come out and, and something big grows from it. You know, it's like, you know, the, the clouds have and pulled back and the sunlight comes down and, and it's like a garden of creativity and the most important thing for a garden to grow is sunlight so we pulled all the clouds back now and we're just watching and, and watching a flower bloom so I'll, I'll hold on <laughs> <laughs> so thank, thank you Alvin thank you so much it's it's, um, it, I know that it's been a while in process, this, this particular clip that we just watched, but also it's been a while in process because every year, you know, you, you, you make sure that we're going to do something. <laughs> and every year there's, you know, another layer that we haven't tried before. And, you know, it's, it's, um, it's wonderful to have you here and to have you start off our um, our opening art discussion and panel with your story, with your his, historic overview of how we got to where we are today. So thank you for your encouragement always. <laughs> when there's sunshine and when there's cloud, and even when there's pouring rain, that was enjoyed Yeah, it's sort of, it's sort of, in a way, it's here because we're just coming out of something and the rain sort of signifies that it's cleansing it all away and new things are coming out. Beautiful. Thank you. So that's Alton Jumper, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you.
So we have a number of other um, uh, our artists present with us. Let's see, did any of these join? We have Tia with us online. Um, and we have a uh, we have a couple likes from the crowd. So thank you to the crowd, crowd who is sending their likes. Um, would anyone like to replace Elgin in the hot seat and uh, introduce themselves? <laughs> I think they're looking at you, Jackie. <laughs> <You can, I laughs> <can. laughs> yeah, it's just the only. You just have to make sure when it's your turn that you can see yourself up. I'll make it short and sweet. Jacqueline Osceola, uh, Panther Clan. I live in the Hollywood Reservation. Um, I do, um, when I first started, I started out with commercial and graphic arts at the Fort Lauderdale Art Institute way back when. Um, <clears throat> I went back to school in 2017 at IIA in Santa Fe, New Mexico. I took studio arts and a little bit of museum studies. Um, there I picked up uh, um, wood carving, linoleum cut, printing, um, woodwork. I love to work with my hands that way. Um, I do uh, some collages with any type of materials. Um, and a lot of it is pertaining to um, my heritage. And um, yeah, that I think art is healing to me and it helps a lot of people to get through certain things that they've gone through in their life. Even if you can't, you say you can't draw, you can draw and something comes out of it. And I feel like that that's part of healing yourself I would like to see, I love seeing all of this art here, and I would love to see more art, because we have a lot more artists. Um, I'd like to see everyone here. Everyone participating. Oh, also, Elgin has always encouraged me throughout the years. So, I really appreciate him too. So next you guys want to go in order of age. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hi, my name is Nicholas. It was a good day. Uh, this is my mother, Jackie Asio. I wouldn't be the person. Or shall I say, freak that I am? Because that's the way I see myself. I see everyone as artists and everything. Everybody has their own way of doing things, whether it's living, you know, or painting, or just being around. I think everyone has something to offer. My mom's been my biggest uh, influence, you know, because she's done all this art all her life. I've seen it, you know, eating, um, drawing. I think painting there, I can't remember. So, um, at the end of the day, yeah, I do painting, I do drawing, I do the feeding, I do a clothing. So I do my own stuff right here too. Um, I do a lot of things, I try to do everything big my shape. I don't want to just limit myself to one thing, because when you limit yourself to one thing, then that's just what you'll focus on. So um, I'm really glad to be here, you know. Uh, it's my first time, I'm really nervous, and I'm going to be back. I got a uh, People got multiple entries in here. I'm like, what did I do? I'm about one. Um, my influences were, uh, yeah, like I said, my mother, um, Indian culture, obviously, um, comics, uh, a lot of metal, you know, rock and roll, and just weird people in the world. Fu Manchu, you know, uh, definitely Confucius, you know, they're pretty cool too. I also like Osceola, the rebellion that he has to offer. And people, you know, to understand, we, you know, didn't run away. We just stood our ground for what we came from as Seminoles and Indians. So I always try to keep that alive and who I am, the rebellion aspect of it, because we went against, you know, forces that were so much bigger and better than us. So 
I always like to think I'm the underdog. And so I like to present that in my art. So, you know, I think, like I said, everyone's an artist. I think everyone has something to offer. And I'm really glad to be here. So, you know, it's, it's all very interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you got to stand by Elgin. <laughs> I'm Karine Cepeda. Um, I live in Tampa, but I'm originally from Naples. Um, this is my dad, Brian. <laughs> uh, talk about, I do lots of different mediums of art. Um, I love doing beadwork, it's probably my favorite, but I also do uh, graphic art. I dabble in mixed media, drawing, painting, watercolors, pen. Um, I grew up with him as a dad. <laughs> Meaning, I was always around a lot of art growing up, um, and that kind of just followed me throughout my whole life. So I can't remember a time where I wasn't doing some form of art, um, which has really helped me as an artist. Um, we used to go to like art museums and stuff all the time, so I would always see different art um, that kind of just inspires me today still. So and I'm very happy to be part of the show. I'm thankful that we have a platform as indigenous artists um, and that more and more museums are looking to feature indigenous artists, which is amazing. So because like not even five years ago would that have been a thing. So it's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Sam, what's Sam? I'm looking at Sam. Sam? Okay. <laughs> Good afternoon. <laughs> uh, let's see, where do I start? Uh, my name is Sam Tommy. Like I said, according to the um, government documents, I might have other names. No. I would stick with that one. Uh, I've been an artist since, as far as I can remember, since like age three or four. I remember working with mud and getting in trouble, making sculptures. And uh, around age four, I remember using sticks drawn in the ground, and my mother encouraged me to draw on papers instead. And she would draw pictures herself. And I'd be kind of start having a uh, a mind that would critique, you know, like, I think I would say it's a little bit kind of square. So I kind of started there. Um, uh, so I remember early age being encouraged by my mother to do drawings. So to make my story a little bit shorter, uh, I do most medias in two dimensional and three dimensional as well, like uh, stone and wood sculpting. Uh, I do film productions. I've been involved in that for many years. I studied a little bit of theatrics in Santa Fe a long time ago. I also at that time became a, a part of a national commercial at that time. So I had fun back then. Um, today I'm involved in film productions. I do my own productions and I do work with professional groups. Um, my best one, best, best memory is the uh, BBC of America, one of the reality shows. Um, so I have um, a lot of stuff and accomplishments, and I've been very fortunate to run to different opportunities, whether films or performing music or guitar or flute. I've been very lucky, and I don't have any uh, thing on online. As far as my bio, I, I hope to do that sometime soon. I keep promising that. Hasn't happened yet. Um, so we're going to be all lucky if, if, if I get to do it. Um, let's see. Um, trying not to repeat myself here. Uh, OK. Um, I've been doing lectures as well on Zoom or on locations. I've been doing a lot of that uh, for the past few years and past month has, has, has been booked all, all week. Um, 
Um, you know, we can, I've been running, pushing myself really hard. I have a lot of projects to do and I've been like falling asleep driving and, and I'm trying to learn how to push myself more. But I have a lot of ideas uh, for my art and I'll need to do them sometime soon. I'm getting too old to have, you know, four hours of sleep every night. Um, anyways, uh, I do have uh, four pieces here and i like to talk about that. I have four pieces, but uh, the way it's going to be laid out is it'll be laid out with one piece up here, two here, one here, and it kind of sh shapes the uh, patchwork design. And from here and on, that's something I'm going to stick with. My Most of my paintings will be in a shape like this, represent a patchwork. I'll have images and so forth with patchworks incorporated somewhere. But that's my way of saying that these patchworks are my tribal heritage. And the uh, Seminole women are the ones who have kept us going. They kept us alive. Because of Seminole women, we are who we are today. And so my art, the way it's designed, is to, to, to put the message out there that, that th these are our work, these designs are, belong to us. And because of the women, we are here. And I plan to do more murals uh, wherever I can find them all. If you can find them all, let me know. <laughs> Yeah, great, great. <laughs> Murals, I've done that in the past, and those are easy and a lot of fun. Uh, so I hope to do more, but I'll be doing more acrylic paintings and so forth. Um, also, like, uh, I will have a music video coming out uh, next month, and it goes with my paintings over there. There'll be an acoustic guitar and vocals, and it'll be a song about the Everglades. Uh, the Everglades is my personal healing. I was born in, on one of Tree Islands, and my grandparents were born and raised out there. And so the Everglades is, is, is my soul and, and my spirit. Um, so with that, um, um, thank you for, thanks everyone for being here. And thank you for your time. Thank you, Sam. <laughs> um, what did we go? Oh, introducing ourselves. Yeah. Uh, Wilson Bowers, Bird Pang from Big Cypress, living in Hollywood. Uh, dabbling in graffiti, acrylic, whatever I can get my hands on. I've been drawing since I was younger. My mom's a former seamstress. My dad does a lot of wood carving, so that's where I get, I guess, working with my hands from. But when we move to the other side, you'll see um, a wall of skateboards, and those are all my designs. And I chose skateboards because that's just kind of like what I did. You know, I haven't skated in a while, but I used to skate a lot, and I just always thought it'd be cool to have my own graphics. And there's a couple of canvases in there too, different different styles, but I don't know. I guess I'll talk about it more when we go over there. If y'all have any questions, just feel free to ask. Thank you. Oh, you can sample you too. <laughs> um, I'm Brian Cepeda, Panther Clan um, from Naples, Florida. I grew up in a village, a civil village, um, surrounded by grandparents, great grandparents, parents, aunts, uncles. Um, growing up, I got to see my grandparents um, doing everything from wood carving to um, patchwork, beadwork, all that sort of stuff. So even as a little kid, uh, um, I started making beadwork on a loom. That, that was the first type of beadwork I did. On a loom, making the little rings, bracelets, all that sort of stuff. As I grew up, I learned how to do a lot more things because um, I had the freedom to, to do the art that I wanted to do. And so I did more of the wood carving and then I went into silversmithing. I learned a little bit from my late cousin, uh, Ronnie Jimmy. 
And then from there, um, two things came together for me. Uh, one, I, I, I worked for a museum at the time, the Adopted Museum. Um, I made a lot of the reproduction items they have on display with the, the mannequins and with the dioramas that they have. And uh, the late director, Billy Cypress, he asked me if I could make beaded bandolier bags because he knew I did beadwork. And I said, well, I've never made one, but if I could see them, I, I could figure out how to make them. And so I looked at a bunch of them that, that we had in, in, um, in the collections, and I, and I took a bunch of notes, took a bunch of uh, measurements, drawings, I took photographs, and I had to figure out how to make it. And so the first beaded bag I made, it took me a long time to make it because I made it and took it apart, and made it again and took it apart because I didn't like the way it looked. And I still don't like the way it looks, that first bag. Um, but I, I was finally like, okay, it's okay for somebody else to see it now. And, and um, I also learned that I had to start taking photographs of the things I made. Um, and so I delved into photography and I got lucky. I, I really did get lucky in photography. Um, I had. I, I, I give credit to two, two main teachers um, in helping me uh, hone my skills, I should say. One, I, I was lucky enough that I got to spend four, four or five days with the Na National Geographic photographer. He was up. And, and on that, I was lucky because he's a Pulitzer Prize winning uh, photojournalist. And he, he was, he, he told me everything he could jam into four or five days about photography. And, and I learned a lot from him. The other one is my friend Elrod. And Elrod at the time was, um, working on a degree in photography at the Fort Lauderdale Art Institute, and he needed help um, with locations because he had to find places to, to fit assignments that he had. And some of them were out in the wild, like he needed to go out into the swamp and stuff. And um, I was like, you go out in the swamp all the time. Can you, can you take me out to some of these places? You know? And I was like, I sure can if you teach me what you learned. And so he was kind enough to show me all the things that he learned how to manipulate light and all that sort of stuff in the photography. And that helped me take photographs of the stuff I made. So one played off of the other. And, and so in this exhibit, that's the two things I have. I have my beadwork on display in the other room, and in this room you see some of my photographs on the wall. Um, what I try to do with my photography is to take photos from angles that people most, most people don't take them from. That usually means me getting dirty laying down on the ground to get a sunset picture or wading out into the swamp to take a picture. Um, there's a photograph hanging in my office and somebody came in the other day and they're like, wow, that's a really, because it's a big picture. I, I want to say it's blown up to uh, 36 by 48 and it's on my wall. And I'm like, who took that picture? I said, oh, I took that picture. And I was telling about that picture. I said, that day, me and my cousin Ollie went out into the Pacific Slough. You know, and, uh, I said, I remember we, it took us a long time to get out there. And I remember putting a tripod in, on, in, in the water because we were both wearing those hip waders to, to try to keep ourselves dry. But uh, we got in there and the tripod started sinking because the ground saw. And I set the camera up and I was ready to take pictures and then it started to rain. So in the picture that's hanging in my office, you can see like the first raindrops hitting the water. And um, the other pictures were nice, but I really liked the way you, it looked like they were almost frozen, the raindrops, because you could see it hit and the bubble coming up from it. And so there's like four of them in the picture, and that's the one I chose to put on it. And um, we also got stuck that day. We ended up hiding out. And uh, our other good friend at the time was working at the museum, Mr. Van Sandals, and we, we called him, and he came out and he was laughing at us. Um, I was like, I got the photo. So I, I, during we, we threw in that, so I, I, I threw my little suggestion in there, you know, the art of healing. And so that, that was that part that I was able to contribute because during the pandemic, my photography and beat, which really helped me get through this to get it all out of my head and out into photographs and out into the beat. Room. So anyway, I appreciate everybody being here, the other artists, as well as the public comments and uh, view our work. Thank you. Gordon Alvarez, somehow another uh, I'm calling my 
Uncle with Footsteps. I'm the new director for the Apollo Museum. And uh, so this this month is November, uh, Native American Heritage Month. And I'm uh, talking to my brothers and my, my elders. Uh, I'm paraphrasing what they told me over the years is uh, we don't need a month. Native Americans don't need a month to celebrate. Uh, celebrate. Uh, for every breath we take, that the uh, breath taker, breath maker gives us, that is our celebration. Every step we take on this earth, that is our, our being here as indigenous people. And, uh, you know, we, we take this opportunity, uh, you know, we celebrate with each other through our arts, but we also celebrate, we want to teach the outside world, the, the non tribals a little bit about ourselves. And you can see our world through our arts. Um, like I said, uh, being a photographer, uh, mostly, uh, do some great work and, and, and some other stuff, but uh, I'm a shutterbug. I've always been a shutterbug uh, since I was, I think, about seven or eight years old. My mom put a, a, a point shoot camera and she went, okay, go and take some pictures. And I had one roll, 24, 24 shots, that's what I had. And uh, I wanted to make sure each and every shot I had counted. And so uh, we have a limited uh, supplies and, and Living in about money, uh, you know, you, you want to make sure that every picture you got of your family counted. So uh, that's how I started, and, and, and they became my subject. And over the years, uh, I expanded my subject uh, to, you know, out to the tribe itself, uh, other elders. And uh, I always get fussed at, you know, don't take my picture, don't take my picture, please don't take my picture. And uh, I would take the picture without asking permission, which would infuriate them. But uh, this little thing came along called. Facebook. And so I started posting them on, on Facebook and oh the, the screams I got from them, put me on Facebook, how dare you? How do you not take my side side not to you? Except for the ones that allow me. But then those those families got to share their elders and they got to you know start bragging about oh I saw you on this and they have little circles uh, in our senior centers. So they started you know kind of like uh, trading cards. They used to trade pictures with each other. And they went, where's, where's my, the ones that I didn't take a picture was, where's my picture? Why, why are you not, why, why are I being taken photos? So when we had events, those seniors didn't want the picture taken anymore, would call me over and I would take the picture. And then next thing you know, I was starting going to your family events and I would get the whole family. So I started archiving their photos. And uh, so basically that's how I got into you know, uh, going around and kind of learning about my tradition, my heritage because I was invited to these homes and they started talking about, you know, what really was important to them. And then I got to hang out with Mr. Brian Cepeda and his adventures. And I got to capture a lot of our, our, our adventures on, on film. And uh, one of them is here today. Uh, it's called uh, Brian Cepeda as a uh, reenactor. And now uh, everybody comes over and enjoys it. It does have a title. I cannot tell you the title because it's, it's got a curse word in it. But, oh. <laughs> But it, it, it was, it's, like I said, it was great memories. And that's, I think, what art does. You know, it brings those emotions, whether it's going to be sad, whether it's going to be, uh, make you think about something, or just, you know, bring, bring a smile to your face. And so uh, before I go, I brought my flutes. I started this. And so I kind of want to end my, my little thing with a song. Uh, it's called uh, Everybody's Warrior. Like Brian said, uh, we had a mentor, uh, my uncle, uh, my late, the late uh, Billy Cypress, who was my uncle for the Alpha Cuban Museum. Um, during the Vietnam War, he was stationed over in Korea. Uh, he retired as a major and the highest ranked uh, Seminole in our in our tribe. Uh, but he never, ever, ever, and also a couple of days ago, uh, last week, we celebrated Veterans Day. And I said, he never talked about his service days. He, you know, uh, never mentioned anything except for one time. Uh, he was telling me when we were out there at the Athletica Museum. Uh, that, you know, and, and got under the bus and, and drove to uh, the Hollywood Reservation and his mom picked him up and they drove to Big Cypress. It wasn't until he got to Big Cypress and he heard the and there's a wind that goes to Big Cypress, uh, and then the birds, and he said that was the first time he actually felt like he was home, that he was safe, and uh, he, 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 you know, that, that's that's the moment that you know he could relax and that he was home and, and he was safe. And so, uh, I, I came up with this song for him, and in the song you're going to hear some beats. 
And uh, on the drum, and power drums, you, they, they call that honor beats. And it is to honor the veterans. So in honor of my Uncle Billy and those veterans that have served, those are, are still in service, and those that have given everything for our freedoms, uh, I want to play the song for you. What happened? I had a tune right. <laughs> here with us via live stream and um, I'd like to introduce her but I just wanted to take one moment to just acknowledge um, each and every one of you for being here and each and every one of you for you know also helping to contribute to our healing and to my healing because you know like that's kind of what we set out to do this year and even last year you know we were like should we do a show you know it's it's a pandemic, you know, everything's, half of everything's still in lockdown, and yet, you know, like, you all can find a way forward, and we're still doing that now. Last year, our opening was 100% virtual. We had Ollie, Alden, and myself, and to try to figure out how to do both, this in-person and virtual, in order to try to accommodate everybody's, you know, differences and how, you know, um, how we need to keep ourselves and our families safe. And so um, I just uh, wanted to say thank you for working, you know, for working together to, to create this space um, here and then also trying to create a beautiful space as well for the people who are joining us and as well the, the people who will be watching later as well. So um, with that, we have one artist. All the artists were invited um, to join us here, and we have one, and that's Tia. Tia, are you ready? I'm going to add you to the screen, okay? <laughs> ready or not? Here you come. <laughs> Hi. Hi. I'm sorry I didn't. <laughs> um, yeah, my name is Tia Blaze Billy. Um, my father is from Otter Clan, and I grew up on the Hollywood Reservation. Um, yeah, I just want to echo a lot of the sentiments that everybody else has touched upon. Um, I think it was so important for us to come together in this way as artists and as Seminole people and indigenous people just in general. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm so grateful that I was born into a culture that is so imbued with art and like so many facets of it. It's so integral to who we are as a people and just, what we do and create in the world. Um, and that I was able to foster that growing up into the kind of art that I do today. Um, I'm really into drawing and just a lot of sequential art, so like comics and film and that kind of stuff. And I really like to explore characters that are either reflections of my own identity or ways that I can connect with other people's identity 
whether that's other indigenous folks, um, just people who have experienced the same things that you or I have. Um, yeah, and I think this was a really, really special show and opportunity to explore those kind of things, um, healing, going through the pandemic. Um, it's, I think it was just really important that we all worked around this and were able to present it to everybody. Oh, and I wanna say a big thank you to Tara for connecting with us in this way and just giving us all this opportunity to be able to show what we're doing to the outside world, but also just like to each other and to any other indigenous people who might be looking to us or joining us. Um, yeah, so thank you so much. I'll just keep you up there. You can change the layout if you want to. Um, we do have one other artist who has joined us that we're going to invite to the hot seat. <laughs> She's trying to take pictures. <laughs> well, you can introduce yourself. Everybody was just, we just got done with everybody introducing themselves. Hi. <laughs> Hi. So my name is Stephanie Hall. Um, I'm a member of the Big Town Clan. Um, I'm from Big Cypress. Currently residing in New Mexico, Rio Rancho, and I'm not very grateful to be here. Invited time after time to this show. It's it's just an amazing space, and I really, really, really enjoyed the the theme of this year, which was the art of healing. Um, that's what I've been doing a lot, just in in general over my whole life. And but very, very, very much so, especially like the pandemic. It just, the theme of this show is just, it's just right of them and um, give the chance for that stuff to come out. And I think that's what we really need all the time every day is like to just express what's inside of us like the emotions um our feelings um really acknowledging just how we feel even if it's not good sometimes or it's not how we want it to be like just um you know just acknowledging what's there what's what we're feeling that's so powerful that's something that i i used to judge myself a lot for if I was feeling depressed or if I was feeling suicidal or if I was feeling this or that way, I would judge myself and I would judge other people too, you know, because when you judge yourself, you're judging. When you judge yourself, it comes out as judging towards other people sometimes. So in like our <laughs> in our communities where we have like drug abuse, drug addiction, we have suicides, we have all these different things that we're dealing with on a daily basis. And then you know, we have to learn how to acknowledge it, give it the space that it needs, not really be too scared to look at it. And that's that's something that I think with the pandemic, we had to sit at home with each other. You know, we had to be around each other. We had to be with ourselves. So that's something that I'm so glad that this, this art show has been able to bring up and like give us the space to talk about this because it's something that we don't really talk about, especially like in my community where I come from on a little reservation, it's, it's kind of like, don't talk about how you feel, but I'm so glad that now we can, you know, we're, we're it's, it's like, it's good to talk about how you feel, let's talk about um, what's on your heart, what's on your mind. And, um, so yeah, that's that's all. Um, my little painting that I made is super fast. In the other room. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I, I titled it High Desert Flash. Um, I also want to thank um, thank Elgin for always being my teacher and the way that he comes up with his titles. Um, I had to draw from his process and um, also just want to say like um, I'm I'm like grateful to also like late Jimmy um, and I like. Just want to acknowledge him too while we're here. I know people probably already have, but his his impact on the community, his legacy that he's left, um, it's just it's just 
one in a, once in a lifetime. So, yeah, that's all. Thank you. Yeah, we we were talking about it earlier, but for this part, portion, for the you know the the part that's being recorded and um, on on the live stream, we had it. Um, we haven't talked about them yet, so it's good. Um, so at this time. Um, we do have some, so as part of this effort that we have of um, bridging the, you know, bridging the space between the younger generations and the elders, you know, including now um, the late Jimmy Osceola, um, who, you know, who we lost this year, last year at this time, you know, he was here with us, his, um, his one painting hung in the same spot where where that one was. I think we had a print too that that, that you brought us to, right, um, Jackie, last year. But um, you know, that's always our task is to think about um, not only the present, but um, you know, the past and the future simultaneously. And so, as part of you know our efforts of doing that, and also because of the encouragement of young people, you know, like Stephanie, like Wilson, like Nick. And like Tia here, we do have some elements of the show that are digital art only. And so we like to, I don't know if I'm showing, showing it or Tia is going to show it, um, just to show you some of the works that you're not going to see in the tour. Um, we've been already uh, an hour, so after this, we'll probably just continue, you know, just do a very brief tour. Um, you guys can um, still, you know, if you wanted to. Um, shout out any of the parts of your artwork that you wanted to talk about, but um, I don't know. I think people's attention spans online is a little less than what they are in person. So, um, Tia, do you want to show the slideshow, or let me see if I can get you back here, or um, do you want me to? Um, if you already have it set up, that'd probably be the smoothest option. Okay, <laughs> okay. I got it. But I'll Thank leave you, you there, right? <laughs> no, that's okay with you. Yeah. On the, I'll press the, um, it's coming. It's just taking a minute to um, transfer. It's taking more than a minute. It is coming. We, we got it up, up here. It's just not showing. Just give us a second one. I see it loading in. <laughs> I wonder if I have to add it to it. No, it should pop up. Any minute now. We got like one um we got one bar on our Wi-Fi. Oh, by the way, we do have a few comments while we're waiting from the online audience. Um I showed a couple of them earlier, but since we have a minute while well, this is catching up. Um, I'll show them. Hold on, let me see what's happening there. Ah, I broke it. What else is good? Slideshow is all right. Get this back. I really did have the slideshow ready to go, but it's just uh, having a hard time reaching it. But we had. I, I, can, um, I can go ahead and. Hear. Jessica, who is one of the artists here, she's actually. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's just still um, going around trying to load. Um, let me stop screen. Did I? Let me just 
Oh yeah, I do have it. Yeah, if you want me to um, share it again, it's still loading, but it, I can do it if you want. But if you but if you have it, you can too. I'm fine with it. This is um, Sierra Club Apache Group. Um, oh, Mary Castle. We talked to her yesterday on uh, on uh, WebEx. She said, "Happy to hear you play, Ollie." And then thank you to all the artists. This thing, I don't know if the whole thing will be or not, because it's still going on. It's still okay. <laughs> it's just showing one of the slides, um, Tia. Okay, I can, I'll try taking over <laughs> a moment. <laughs> it's still trying to load it. It was lo loaded and then I, I don't know why. Oh, it's coming, it is coming. Slowly, very slowly. Oh, Tia's got it too. <laughs> yes, shout out my sister. <laughs> uh, if you would still like to narrate, I'll just I can. If anybody's on live. Yeah, go ahead, Tia, if you can. Is it still trying to look? Tell us when you get to the um, when you get to the last one. Oh yeah, they're testing this work along with um, Erica's and then Brian's in the background. I think that's the end. Thank you, Tia. Okay, so I'm going to try to um, switch over so we can do a question. We had uh, also an art market that was planned. Um, is anyone still interested in doing the art market? This morning was that all the vendors that usually attract all the people took off when it started raining. Of course, it's a beautiful day now. So we still we have the table, so we could you know put them on if you guys want to do that. But um, I just wanted to get a sense of it. But we can do a quick tour, I think, um, and switch 
switch. I'll switch to, we'll switch to the other room. And uh, then we'll end the online portion and then we'll figure out if we're going to do the art market or not. Sounds good to see you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Oh, I'm gonna go get the other but we can run the other So we're like all different so that was different areas as well. It's not just down there. Like, like there's a couple of different areas. I don't know if they were. Yeah. Yeah. So there's more artists. Like, cool stuff. Yeah. 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 Cool Thank you. 